How y'all doing? Now I'm back with another video. Guess what? It's time for programming content. Yay! Um, so something I was working on the other day is I am beginning this transition of moving my uh, script that does the uh, editing for my YouTube videos uh, into um, an actual language because I'm I have plans to make it a far more complex than what it is now in terms of what you can do with it. Um, specifically, I want to be able to basically define in something like a JSON file all of the editing that I want done, and I just read that and just do all the editing. And uh, I just basically want to make this this program far more robust than what it is right now. So to that effect. I was essentially taking what I have in my shell script and I am in the process of porting it over to Go. Um, and this was initially going to be like, well, it's another video, like another video editing video. But really, in this particular subject, I'm just going to be talking about one specific thing that I had to figure out how to do in Go, which actually was really easy and I wanted to show this because. Um, I feel like more people would find the benefit of writing like command line programs in Go if they knew how easy it was to uh, parse the arguments, the like flag arguments for programs. So that's what I'm going to be showing you today. Uh, if before we get started, if you if while you're watching this, if you enjoy the video and you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, drop me a like, subscribe. I'd appreciate it a whole lot. And with that, let me show you the goods. So. You probably recognize the this file right above me. This is my um, uh, script that does my YouTube editing. Uh, right now, all it does is um, apply an overlay animation, a fade in, a fade out effect, and it pins my outro. Uh, and the thing on that thing on the left is the start. Oh, wait, point this way. Okay, this is the start of my Go program to uh, expand what this uh, script is capable of. Uh, so you will see here, and the reason why I'm doing arguments is, if you saw the video about me tweaking a script to uh, make it easier to use at a WebPEG's draw text filter, um, I actually tried to handle the arguments in a more formal manner that way, rather than just assuming everything is in a certain order as I do with the, the my old script that above me. And I want to handle it more formally. So uh, I wanted to see how easy that was in Go. It turns out it's pretty freaking easy. So I'm going to go over what's happening here. Uh, we can ignore probably a good chunk of this. I'm only going to be specifically talking about how to parse the uh, flag arguments into variables and uh, what formats you can pass the flags into a program. Uh, so Go has this really nifty and aptly named package called flag. The whole purpose of it is to parse the flag arguments passed into a program whenever you run it. Um, and you can do uh, several things with it. And the most, the thing that I found very useful was um, it has these uh, functions called uh one will just be called i think this is called string and then one's called string var and you see i'm using string var so what string var is is i've i've initialized a bunch of variables up here some string variables some ints and uh, a boolean so what you do is for like string var you pass it a pointer to the variable you want the uh the um, uh value that was passed into the flag where uh, you pass it the pointer of what variable you want it to be stored into, uh, the name of the flag. Now, the name of the flag, this will basically allow it to parse the flag in, I think, three main ways. And it's essentially the three ways you typically see flags passed into programs. And I'll show you what I mean real fast. So uh, if we, I think this is still my history. You. See that? Yeah, you can see that. So uh, there are a couple different ways you can uh, pass in this. So you see, I have an input flag. 
Well, there's a couple of different ways I can do this and it will parse it fine. Uh, the first one, uh, I think that should work. I don't, I don't know if I broke this while I was tweaking this earlier. So what this will end up doing is, well, you can't actually see this. Let's actually, let me go up here real fast. Uh, we'll just do FMT print F um, input file is in S uh, input path. Yeah, and new line. Okay. And OS exit. Just so it just goes and stops. So I'm gonna I'm gonna run this, and what you should see is that when it prints out the uh, value stored in that variable, it should be equal to this file path that I have here. Assuming I didn't break something. Yeah. Okay. So you see input file, and then the big old the long file path I gave it. So there's two different other ways I think you could do well. If you're passing in a value, I think there's only one other way. Uh, so the other way is to is to do it like this with the equals, which kind of uh, mirrors more how you would like, assign a variable a value in a programming language. So this should work too. Yeah. And um, anytime you're doing these flag arguments where you, you have the dashes, you know, uh, it'll, it'll also parse double dashes because double dashes are also a common way of passing in flag arguments. So this should work. Yeah. And the other way should work without the equal sign. Yeah. So um, the, the one other way you can do it, and I think this is only for uh, if it's a Boolean, is you just pass it in like, just like, just like this. Uh, this won't do anything right now because I'm stopping. Uh, but that's the other way you can pass in the flags is just to just to pass in like the flag with nothing next to it. I believe, yeah. Um, uh, so and the other nice thing this does is so I, I let me finish explaining what else is here. So you have the pointer to store the value into uh, the name of the flag that it uses to parse it. And so this one, and this is a default value. Uh, now you may ask, what if I don't want a default value? Well, as far as I know, there's not really a way to say I don't want a default value. You'll just have to do some checking afterwards to see if it's, if it is the default value, because if it's the default, that means I didn't pass anything in. So you'd want to, you say, throw an error message or something. And then this is a description of what the flag is for. Uh, this is used when you print the usage. Um, and you may think you have to um, like define the usage yourself. No, actually, if you parse flags this way, it actually automatically generates um, some default usage information that is, is pretty nice in and of its own. It, it, it's a, I would say as just like, right out of the box without you having to configure the usage information it assuming your descriptions of the flags are appropriate um they will more or less explain what it's for um so you see i have a bunch of other flags set uh defined here um here's an int an integer variable so this will actually try to uh typecast everything and if it can't typecast it it'll actually throw an error so it actually kind of does some type checking on what they're what someone's passing in as arguments. So for this int variable here for the starting time for the overlay to be put in the video, uh, if they pass in something, it just isn't a number. Like instead of saying a number, they pass it a file path. It'll just say, hey, I can't parse that. It's not a number. And it'll, I think by default, it um, just prints the usage, the default usage information. Um, just some more string variables. And there's a Boolean variable for to just print the help usage. And then you call parse. And it'll basically, whenever you execute the program, it'll look for all those little flag arguments and store them in these variables. Um, I think, I'm not sure if it'll throw an error if you pass in a flag that it doesn't recognize. Actually, let me try that. I don't think I've actually tried that. So if I say like, what? I don't know if I'll... Yeah, yeah, flag provided but not defined dash what. 
So even if they pass in a flag that's not not a valid flag, it'll actually throw an error by default, which is really nice too. Um, cause I actually asked somebody about how I was handling the arguments in my draw text script, and they said I should actually be handling stuff like invalid flags, but I was like, nah, I'm not, it's only meant for me to use, I don't really care. Uh, but this gives me that right out of the box, so even better. Um, so once this is parsed, all of these variables, provided there were things passed into them, will have, the, have their, their values set to whatever's passed in, or the default of there was nothing passed in. Um, and so you may ask, what if I want to explicitly print this usage information as I'm, as say, if someone calls help? Well, there's a handy little function for that. You just call print defaults and it'll, all this information, you saw that, like that nicely formatted information. Let me um, get rid of this real fast. So if I ran this and I actually pass in help, it'll just print out this neatly formatted information about what all the valid flags are, uh, what types they are, and what the description is that I gave them. So that's, that's more than some programs even have to them. Uh, but they even explicitly gave them those, um, those usage information. Um, I believe you can also actually change what that information is. So if you do flag dot usage, I think, you can, I think you can either just set it to a string or you can actually set it to a function that say maybe does like a series of print lines or something like you do FMT um, print line. Um, this is my neat program. FMT print line. Uh, here is some usage information. Uh, so presumably, if I'm not retarded, that should actually do. No, that's not what that does. Okay, maybe you have to do it before parse. I don't remember off the top of my head to be frank. This is all stuff I figured out while I was messing around with this the other day. Um, does it do? No. Okay. Well, I apparently am being derpy. I don't remember how to do that. But I, I do recall you can overwrite what the uh, default usage information is, I think. Or maybe I'm c confusing print defaults and usage as, as the same thing. Maybe they're not, I don't know. Um, but that this is essentially all you need to handle command line arguments to your programs is just, just use flag. Um, you could, I think there's, there's a fair bit more you could do with this, but if, if literally all you're wanting to do is handle flag arguments to your program, this this basically gives you everything you need right out of the box. Type checks, um, will throw errors on invalid flags, prints pretty decent looking health information. Um, and that's that's all I want right now. Uh, maybe if this gets more involved, I'll want something more complicated done to it. But as of right now, this is suiting my needs just fine. Uh, the next thing I'm probably going to show you, because I already had to figure out how to do this, is how to um, execute external programs in Go, because I had to do that to call my uh, script to get the video duration of the input video using the other script that I made in a, like a month ago or something like that. Um, so that's all I got for this video. Uh, if you like the video, you want to follow me on other social media and stuff, I got links down there for Discord server and Twitter and some other things. Uh, but if you would like to support the channel, and I would love you so much, there's some links down there below as well as some referral links for Amazon, things like that. And uh, one last, and again, if you if you'd like the video, uh, like, uh, subscribe, uh, share it to somebody who, in case they were trying to pull their hair out, trying to figure out how to uh, handle command line arguments and go, there you go. It's super easy. Very good. And with that, uh, y'all come on back now and I'll see you next time.